done, we're going to be going over a new feature in Unreal Engine 5.4 and up that you can use in pairing with the Light Pass as an AOV widget. It's called the Movie Graph. The Movie Graph is a procedural workflow to rendering layers similar to Katana and Houdini, but without the same level of power. I'm not going to tell you this is stable or intuitive to use, but I've tried adapting the workflow I use in productions with softwares like Katana or Houdini to the Movie Graph that requires limited changes between shots. And then I'll go into the movie graph tab on the tool and what settings you need to use in order to get this working. So we're going to create a new movie graph file here. Inside you'll see some nodes and we'll go through what these are and how to set them up. So this input node is where we're going to start our graph. The global section is where we're going to make the nodes for all our render settings. I'll just clear out all of these nodes and we'll start from scratch. First thing I want to do is drop in a warm-up settings node and connect it to our global's input. The warm-up setting node allows you to adjust warm-up count for your renders. Warm-up frames will calculate frames before the render to make sure you don't have motion blur or sim issues on the first frame. Next, I'll drop in a game overrides node. In the game overrides, you can change your scalability and render streaming settings. Next one we'll drop in is the sampling node. And in this sampling method node, you can adjust your temporal sample count. Let's also drop in a camera settings node, and here is where you can adjust the shutter timing or the overscan percentage. Lastly, we'll drop down the global output settings node. Here you can adjust your output directory, resolution, frame rate, frame range, and version number. Keep these checked as the light passes an AOV widget will override these settings. This gets connected to the global's input of the output node. We'll go back to the inputs node. The second input is called default layer. In the input section, you can create multiple branches for passes, but we're going to use the default layer input and then branch off later. You can change the name of this input, but it won't affect your render. We're going to again, delete all the nodes, attach and start from scratch. First thing we'll do is figure out our render type. You can use the deferred render node to use Unreal's deferred rendering engine, or you can use the path tracer render node to create a ray trace render. Under these nodes, you can adjust the spatial sampling and the aliasing methods, as well as some other lighting and rendering overrides. As mentioned in the previous video, we're going to disable the tone curve and allow OCIO. Since we're going to be rendering with PXR, I'll add the EXR sequence node. Here we can input our file compression. I'm going to use zip 16 scan lines. I can also set up our OCIO config. I'm going to leave the file name format here the same. Next, we need to set up collections. If you're used to Katana or Blender, we'll know what collections are. Although we don't have the power of cell statements like we do in Katana, we can use the condition groups to search for actors. I had trouble using the component tag search for blueprint actors, so I'm going to stay away from that for now and instead just use my actor tag names. Luckily for all my casts, I tag them as Anim, FX, or CFX, so I can use those and just add a couple more custom tags to fill it out. For my BG collection, I want everything outside of the car, so I've added a tag to all of the buildings and streets as buildings. I'm also gonna add my rain splash effects to this group as well for the windows. I've added a glass tag for them and that's how I'll search for those actors. And then I'll add in my FG collection. Now I'm going to create the modifiers for my BG render. In the first modifier, I want to set up the foreground objects. So I click on the foreground collection by hitting the cube with the plus, then I activate the holdout visibility option. Next, I want to add the windows modifier. I want the windows hidden as to not affect the alpha of the image. I add the windows and set the hidden visibility option to true. Next, I'll add in my render layer node and set the name to BG. Under outputs, I'll change my input name to BG and connect the render layer node to the BG input. Now we're gonna branch off from our last collection node. This is so we use all of the other render nodes in our render and don't have to recreate them, creating consistency. We'll add our BG modifier like before and we'll set the holdout to on so we get a clean alpha. That's all we need to adjust. We'll add in our render layer and name it foreground Next, we'll create a new output and name it FG. Connect it and save the file.
So we're gonna to go to our tool now and you'll see in version 5.4 and up, there's two tabs here, MRQ and Movie Graph. MRQ will work the same as before, but we're gonna focus on the Movie Graph section. So click the Movie Graph button and we'll see a new layout. We wanna activate the Movie Graph override and then select our output path. We can change our resolution and version number. All of this can be done with the preset as well. Next, we'll expand the Movie Graph section and we're going to select our root graph. I'll just drag mine in. After that, we can click into our AOV section, and here we can, like normal, select the AOVs we are using. Once we're all done, I'm going to hit render and let it go. Now in Nuke, you can see I have all of my layers set up with all of my light passes. So we're able to take advantage of the procedural warrior workflow while getting additional light passes and AOVs from our tool. If you want to render light passes and AOVs inside Unreal Engine, be sure to check us out in the Fab Marketplace. Link will be in the description. Thanks.